I, I know what I want in a landing page, but, um, but if a grad is looking to run, run a particular program and again, to use the word create, think and create it. My phone. I think so. He's clearly not used to the podcast. <laughs> no. I think we just found our teaser. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, the, the beginning, we, we do a teaser. You could only answer it if it's a graduate. That's true. Okay. <laughs> so, so the, the, it's important. Just answer the goddamn yeah, phone. Who it is. <laughs> um, so, he's a rookie, Joe. That's okay. No, he's a, he, no, he's a rookie on the Mr. podcast. Martel? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's well, a podcast rookie. This is only episode two for you, so we get um, it. There are just too many commercial loan brokers that don't have a damn clue of what they're doing. All we're trying to do here is better the industry for everybody. At the end of the day, you can make great money in this industry, but in the end, it's all about helping people. You know, people always say, Chris, how can I be a successful broker? It's two words, hard work and dedication. If you don't like talking to people, you probably shouldn't be in this business. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Entrepreneurs in Finance, where we explore the daily lives of graduates and the CCTG team here and what life is like as a CCTG graduate. Uh, this episode is a uh, kind of a, 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 a reflection on a big part that happens here at CCTG when you purchase any package. And so I like to name this episode leads, 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 and leads. Um, Four leads. <laughs> Lots of leads. So um, the wonderful gentleman here on, I, on both of my, my sides here, my right and left-hand side, I'll give you a quick introduction to who we have here. I pulled in one of our foremost experts on leads, the gentleman who really runs our PPC lead department, Rick Bartelli. Hey, Rick. How you doing? What's going on? Good morning, Chris. Good morning. Good morning, Joe. Good morning, sir. And Joe Schaefer. Yeah. Everybody's familiar with me by now. Everybody's right? familiar with Joe Schaefer. If you're watching the episodes, remember. Everybody's favorite producer. <laughs> um, so, you know, what we try to do here with CCTG is is give you really a, a, a reality into a lot of the components that go into the CCTG program. And one of the biggest components um, which sometimes dictates why people choose packages, uh, different packages is, is leads. Leads is a big, big, um, component. Wouldn't you agree, Rick? I would agree. 300%. 300%. Absolutely. 400%. 400%. Um, and the reason is, is because people look into our program and you know, the common question that at least Mike Geisler gets are what are these leads, right? what do you mean by a lead? Is it, is it something where I get and five other people are calling on the same lead? Is it do you guys generated? Do you buy them from somewhere? You know, there's a lot of confusion right. around uh, p people looking into us of what a lead actually is. So I thought let's just cut right to the chase and go to the expert and have you explain it all. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, I would be handing it off to me right now. Uh, well, yeah. So I'm going to, uh, I'll give you a question. So I guess sure. number one, introduce yourself to everybody again. I know you were on an episode about yeah. legacy packages, but explain your role here. Yeah. My name is Rick Bartelli. I am the director of lead generation here at the finance marketing group, uh, part of CCTG. And what, uh, what I do, I work particularly with the, the platinums and the legacies. And um, that's a, a slew of services for your business, but from a lead generation standpoint, it is um, 24 months for the Platinums and 36 months for the Legacies. Now, when people ask the question, you know- And one month for the Golds. And one month for the Golds. Right. So, so they get a, a taste of what lead generation is, what it can be, and then um, structure a, a paid package that um, is within their budget. And you know, whether it's monthly, three months, six months, 12 months, we basically do everything um, that is, you know, that, that tailors the, the graduates sure. situation. Yeah. So yeah. lead generation in essence is um, running highly targeted um, configured Google ads. We build landing pages. Otherwise known as PPC. Otherwise known as PPC. Pay per click. Pay per click. And a lot of people coming in, don't, you know, don't know what PPC means. So um, yes, it stands for pay per click. And um, Google refers to it as their Google ads product, previously known as Google AdWords. And um, what it consists of, of the way that we do it is we build very um, uh, highly targeted landing pages 
that um, that really uh, summarize the different loan products that we that we um, we offer that the grad can offer. And that landing page is um, they're also referred to as squeeze pages because you really want to. They're they're a separate. They're separate from the site, but they're built within the brand mm-hmm. of, the, of the graduate's website. Mm-hmm. And they consist of basically bullet points of the different types of loan products that we offer, whether if, if it's a landing page for one particular product, what we do is, uh, you know, since commercial real estate is such a big part of what we do is we run what I call a general commercial real estate uh, campaign. Sure. Which um, basically is an all-encompassing landing page with bullet points promoting, you uh, Bridge lending, fix and flip, multi-unit uh, properties, new construction, uh, cash out refinancing, um, all the commercial real estate products that the graduate really needs to get comfortable with and, um, and, 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 and go after and make part of their, their business. So we, um, we put a campaign together that has a very appealing landing page with a form fill that's very easy for the borrower that finds the landing page, and I'll talk about that in a second on Google, to to uh, see what that what that company offers, and to be able to do a quick 30, 60 second form fill on yeah, entering some basic. The main goal is to get the 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 the, the potential borrower to either exactly. call or, or fill out a form. Exactly, yeah. and we have a call number in the ad itself, as well as a form fill, which um, borrowers will do one of of either. Right. And the whole idea is submitting that lead, that lead from that landing page in real time and everything, you know, this isn't about re, uh, repurpose lists or stagnant lists or us collecting leads and distributing uh, them to grads. No, it's all real time. Um, for that particular, for that grad's particular brand. graduate, yep. for the, it's their campaign and they're getting uh, immediately, they're getting a call, whether the uh, individual chooses to, um, to use the call number or to, uh, to, to fill out the form in the landing page, submit it via email and, and, and the grad gets time. that yeah, in, in real in time. Seconds. And I want to, I want to just break there for a second because that's an important aspect. A lot of, there's a lot of lead generation portals or companies out there that are what I call lead aggregators where they're doing the same thing that we do, except the way they make money is they'll take that lead they generate and then sell that maybe four or five times to loan brokers or exists in every industry, right? right. We're not that. We're, we are what I call lead generation specialists in its purest form, meaning we're doing, we're not a lead gen company, we're a marketing company. And so we're marketing that graduate's brand, right? Their landing page. We don't have any control of who gets what lead, right? I mean, I mean, I mean, it's that, and it's real time. So we're not reselling these. We're not selling them to four grads, three grads. It's, it's, right. That lead is exclusive. When that borrower calls or fills out that form, that grad just gets it. Nobody else gets it. That grad gets it. Exactly. Yeah, we're not a lead aggregator. We're a marketing company. And that's that's like the purest form of the lead. Um, it's not only the purest form. Yeah. I also think it's the only ethical way of lead generation. I think everything right. that you just mentioned is, in my opinion, in, in, it's unethical. You know, I mean, sure. the way we do it, again, is in its purest form. Um, it's not something we're collecting or seeing unless... Sometimes I'll CC myself on a lead if I'm if I do what I'm calling shadowing a graduate because I, I'm cons- you know I I I want to see how their campaign is going for a particular reason mm-hmm. I'll get CC on the lead in real time with them so I can see the lead number right. one that the lead came in but also look at the lead detail to be able to just uh, get my own perspective on the quality of the lead it right. gives me information to tailor their campaign to optimize it. Uh, accordingly make, make tweaks here and there, things of that nature. And, that, and that's great that you brought that up because we, you know, I, I want to, you know, my, when we set this up years and years ago and, you know, I wanted to make sure that, you know, the graduate is doing their part too. Right. And I'm going to talk about this in a little bit in terms of a two way street here, but you know, we, we do our best job of getting the lead, but they have to, it's not over. Once, once the leads generated, then it's, that's the grad's part. And they have to do a whole sequence of events to follow up and, and, and how to approach the lead correctly. But we track everything. And you know that, right? I mean, we, we, we uh, uh, you know, we have a, we get a copy of all the lead forms that are filled out. Yep. Uh, we have call tracking on, on the ad. So you maybe want to explain that it's not the actual graduates number, but it's a call tracking number that we purchase. So we, yeah. 
can track the leads that we generate. Yeah, we'll right? create a tracking number because um, you know, we have we launched our, our lead generation dashboard in December. Mm -hmm. um, so we can have a consolidated um, you know, central area for the graduate, for us too, but for the graduate to be able to log in and see all their call detail. Um, sometimes you know, we, don't, we don't count the same, you know, talking about in its purest form, in its purest form at the call level as well, because um, when you were looking at monthly reports, some people call in more than once mm -hmm. or several times, mm -hmm. and we filter those out. We don't count them more. We don't count a caller right. more than once. The tracking number is basically uh, a number within the same area code is the actual business. It forwards to that number, and it provides all the detail as well as a recording of the call so the graduate can self critique themselves listen to their call and we can critique the graduate too if and, they're and if, if they're honest to yeah we, right. we can do it as well so it's really um you know we have um very specific uh tracking information on both the calls and also the lead detail because um we use a platform called unbounce and the landing page the form fills um are submitted to the to the lead dashboard with all the detail all the information credit score collateral how long have they been in business give us some details about this loan. Um, we get to see that too. And it doesn't give me all the information to know how a campaign is performing and how a graduate is doing. Um, but it gives me, it gives me some important information in terms of the, of the general quality of the lead. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that's, you know, that, and, and, you know, we, we go through great lengths to generate these leads for our graduates. Um, but one of the big things that I want to highlight here is, you know, again, it's a two way street. We have to do our job at a very high performance, but then the grad, once the lead is generated via call or form, the grad has to operate at their highest level, which means what? It means being ready to, 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 to respond to that lead very quickly, right? Because the longer it takes them to respond to that, the chances of that, that deal or, or, you know, closing or even materializing goes way down, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so it's response time. Then it's also, you know, when they do respond, when they do, you know, actually finally respond to the lead, what that what that conversation's like? How do you know? Because at the end of the day, this is sales, and what's that conversation like? Are they getting the right information? And then after the call, which is a big part, are they following up? Right? I mean, absolutely. Are they following up? Because you know, after you hang up the call and they say send me the application. I mean, you're not even nearly even started yet in that sales process. You right. have to follow up five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times even after that because people are busy running their business. Absolutely, right? absolutely. And these are things that you, you know, um, th th that you go through in your in, in the. Class. I do. I hit it hard. You know, I hit it hard. It's important, you know, because I, you know, it, I, a, a graduate comes to mind um, that early on uh, kept using the phrase that he's counting on me, mm -hmm. and. Um, and I and I reminded them. I said, well, "You, this is this is my job. This We're is counting my, on you this too, is what though. I do, but you need to count, <laughs> you, you need to count on yourself. You need yeah. to pick up your phone. Right. You need to give your, yourself the best opportunity to be successful. That's picking up your call, not letting it go to voicemail. Right. When you get an email lead, that's res basically responding by way of a call to that email lead within five ten minutes. Mm -hmm. Because most loan seekers are, um, you know, they're shopping around sure. to an extent. Sure. So if you wait, if you sit in your laurels and you're waiting a half hour respond to an email lead or you're not picking up the phone because you decided well you know i work for myself now i work the hours i want you know and i'm gonna they can wait till tomorrow i'm going golfing so you know, <laughs> yeah. you know i'll pick up i'll I'll, you know, I'll call them back in a few hours or maybe tomorrow mm -hmm. you, you just shot yourself in the foot in mm -hmm. two in two very uh damaging ways you know you, you need to you need to stay on top of this you need you, you you i can do everything i can to bring you as many quality leads as possible on a monthly basis. But right. the graduates, the graduates that do the best, they don't need to be, they don't need to be told this stuff. You know? Right. Um, and, and for those that are, are truly entering a new industry and maybe they, maybe they haven't uh, done sales in the past, or maybe they haven't done a lot of it um, needs. It needs to be reiterated to them that this is, this is key. You know, you need to be able to get, even if it's uncomfortable for you, maybe this, you know, some folks, as we know, they need to be a little bit handheld and they're a little, they're a little afraid of the sales process, right. a little, not, not as quite um, sure of themselves as other folks that 
sure. have been in this industry or not necessarily this industry. Or just been in sales. Been in sales, period. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Um, they're not afraid of no's. They're not afraid to get uncomfortable. They're not afraid of, of rejection. Um, and in and, and if you if you know for those folks that are or, or even a little bit, the best way to knock that out is is to get on the phone. Practice is the practice. practice. You know, I mean, that's yeah. before I went into digital marketing. I I made a hundred cold calls a day as my first job out of college. Mm -hmm. Um, selling computer training. Yeah. And they were cold call. I mean, they were as cold as cold calls get. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I was terrified. Right. But I knew, but the more that I got through it, the more that I, you know, the more that I heard every type of response, the the more numb I got to it. So, well, and you could create, you, you get better and better. You craft your response. You exactly. could, you know, and, exactly. and, and, and you, you just got to kind of jump in and swim. It's so important. You know, even if you don't know how to swim, you just got to jump in and you'll figure it out. It's so you important. Know? Yeah. You, yeah. You'll, you'll figure out uh, what, works for your personality. Many right. people already do because we have a lot of entrepreneurs that are very, you know, they're, they're very, um, they, they have, they're articulate, they're go-getters, they're, go yeah. they're good on the phone. They, right. they know exactly uh, the, the sales aspect that's going to be part of this job. Right. Um, others just, you know, they need, they need a little, a little, uh, you know, a little handholding and, and that's, and that's okay, but you still have to know that you, you have to, you have to really get after it. You got to do your part. Yeah. I mean, cause it's, it's so easy to, you know, blame a company that's doing lead generation. Oh, your leads suck or, or, or they don't work. Um, it's so easy to say that no matter if it's us or anybody, but not realizing that, you know, again, we get it to the halfway point. You gotta, you gotta close it out there because of, right. And, and, and as I explained in class, it's a two way street. I mean, it's, it's a relationship we're in. And if you're not fulfilling your end of the bargain of the relationship, a relationship doesn't work. Right. You look at, Absolutely. you know, a marriage, you look at anything. If one person, you know, are, are not, are not performing at an optimum level, it's not going to work. And, and, and I really go through that. You know, I go through that in class where I, I set, I set that expectation and say, look, and, and, and you know, a, 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 a great um, story that I love to tell in class and you're right in the, in the trenches with this, but or you, you and Alex too, where you're doing a review call and somebody says, Oh, you know, in the contract, it says seven to 25 leads. I only, you know, you only generated four this month and you know, you and Alex were scratching your heads going, what are you talking about? Well, I only got four contact form fill outs. And then when you guys go in and look, you go, well, you actually got like 17 calls. Right. So therefore, you know, you're right at 25 leads and they go, well, no one left a message. And it's like, that's not our problem. I mean, you know, meaning they, they got 17 calls and if no one left a message, that's not our fault that the grad didn't have the proper um, infrastructure in place and either, either to, to pick up the phone, take a message or even a, a professional voicemail to see if somebody could, could, could leave the message. That's not our fault. You know, that we actually unfortunately spent money to generate that call. If they're not there to pick it up, and that counts as a lead, exactly. you know, and the graduates like, Oh, well, they just think like a lead means they leave a voicemail. No, I mean, somebody could call and if you're not there, they're on to the next person. So I, yeah. you know, that's, that's, that's what I mean. A two way street. And people that have sales backgrounds that have been successful in sales, they know that they know that you don't let a call go to voicemail. Mm -hmm. You don't let a shopper of anything, you know, that you want to try to get their business build right. a relationship with them. You know, the first, the first thing is picking up your phone, right? responding to the emails with a phone call within five to 10 minutes. And, um, you know, then you've done the first thing, right? The second thing is, uh, is professional is knowing how to handle the call, knowing how to build rapport and, and, you know, earning that borrower's trust through the first phase sure. to, um, to be able to get them into either another conversation, get some initial uh, information or documentation from them and, and get them ultimately in, into the pipeline for a close. Um, and you're just, you're, you're dramatically reducing your chances of success if you're not picking up that phone quick and responding and, and, to the email. And, quick, and the third part, I'd say the third part in, in your analysis is the follow-up. So yeah. just, just because you had a great call, right? Let's say the call was great. First call bar says, great. Send me the, the, uh, you know, send me your application. Brad's excited. They sent him the application and you know, the, the, the borrower, one of the last words a borrower may say is, all right, great. When I get the application, you know, I'll take some time, look at it, look it over and I'll get you everything. I'll, I'll send it back to you. Right. And a lot of people that are not used to sales are content with that. They're like, great. I'll wait for you to send oh, it back to done. me. My job's, my job's done. done. Commission checks on the way. <laughs> it's not because what do they have to, now it comes, 
really a whole other aspect of this process is you have to follow up. You really do. You, you got to follow up the day after every other day. You got to keep following up. You know, we teach in class text messaging gets really good response rates. So get their cell phone number, text them. Hey, did you get my application? Yep. Um, and a lot of time in this industry, B2B sales, I always say, um, uh, uh, you know, there's only half of 1% of the time you'll close a deal after one call. Half of 1% is a chance. Right. Over 90% of the sales that happen are usually in that eight to 10 touch range after oh, yeah. you send them the application, you know? Um, and a lot of grads are just content, you know, I know you and Alex may have calls with grads and you say, well, what about this lead and this lead? And they're like, well, yeah, I sent an application now, but they haven't contacted me back. And you're like, what are you talking about? Did you follow up with them? Well, no, they You're said the salesperson, not them. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, they said they'll follow up with me. And it's like, well, that doesn't matter. Follow up with them. Right. There's other things going on. They're running a business and people that run businesses are busy at running their business. I mean, you find the balance too. you know, I mean, be persistent. But but don't be obnoxious. You know what I mean? There's a there's a fine right. line between, you know, right. give something a certain amount of time, not too much, you know, but you know, you're saying seven or eight touches. We have a, a three call summary. We go through this and um, buy or die. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, I mean, I mean, and, and at the end of the day, you're not going to go to jail. <laughs> I mean, right. If someone says you're annoying me, get the F out of here. All right. So what? I mean, just, just move on. I mean, exactly. exactly. <laughs> follow, follow up, you know, and yeah. try to try to set up that follow up too, that you're going to let them know, say, I'm going to give you a call back uh, either, you know, Later today or tomorrow, right? Um, and you know, expect to be hearing from me. Yeah. And then do that and and do that several more times if necessary because that's you're right. It, it's follow up is so important because it just when you follow up more, you 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 strengthen that connection with with the potential yeah um, with the potential borrower right. And what do you have to lose? You're going you're going to get no's anyway. You're some you know, sure deals are not just it's not going to go through, even if you do everything right, right. So maximize the probability of as many deals getting closed by, by doing everything right. right instinctually, right. having that be second nature. And, and, you know, it's, it's important to talk about it in all sales, no matter how they get a lead, whether it's through your program or if they're just networking, they should approach the same principle of following up. But Absolutely. what, what, what this program is really embellishes. And I think highlights is the fact that these guys can start talking to people immediately. I mean, literally, you know, as soon as their website is done, built, campaign launched, I mean, it's a chance. As soon as your team flips everything on and starts rolling, yep. it's a chance to start talking to people immediately. It takes a couple yeah. of days for, for Google to optimize the campaign. To get right. To what's referred to as, as learning mode. Right. But, but, you know, it's at most a couple of days. And um, you're, you're basically, you know, you're kicking off your business with immediate opportunities. We have our SEO piece as well, mm -hmm. which does a lot of um, local and regional ranking, um, right? which, you know, Joe, that's your wheelhouse. Joe, Joe heads that up. Yep. And, um, and that's going to, that's going to pay dividends further down the road sometime between the six and 12 month time yeah. frame in terms yeah. of your local regional listings. Um, the lead generation at the national net where we're basically, you know, we're, we're running a national campaign in every small town, Medium sized town and, 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 and that's why the grad that maybe only lives in if they live in a remote area with your program, I always say that, you know, we generate, they can market to people in Manhattan. I mean, it doesn't matter where they're Absolutely. geographically located because you're generating leads all over the country from people looking for financing all over the country. We live in a digital world and, you know, some people still, you know, like the comfort of working with a local person and, 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 uh, and meeting with them, but that's, that's, that's obscure rare. in our industry. It's it is obscure rare. at this point in time. It's yeah. really a matter of, you know, I mean, this, you know, this is a big country and we have a lot of opportunity. There's a, there's a, a ton of opportunity out there. And if you're mixing up your net, you're mixing up your, your marketing and that, that mix that mixes between uh, like, you know, lead, lead generation PPC, which is immediate. The SEO starts kicking in um, and networking. You're looking, you're networking. ranking in your state. You're networking. You're doing your due diligence, and you're networking locally and regionally. Yeah. Know your know your know your BBB. You know your local and, and get sure. out there. Go you know go go in start walking into banks, giving out your business card, and that, and, commercial and, lending. Yeah, uh, we always say there. we always say marketing as a whole these days is a is a multi pronged strategy. You know, you got to have a couple of irons in a fire. One strategy you cannot rely on 
100% in any business, not just this business, you know, PPC is one aspect and it, and it, and it provides consistent, you know, um, deal flow, you know, working on things, but then Absolutely. you got to do networking as well. And you got to do this and that we, we, you know, we cover that in training. Most Italians say it's the pizza pie strategy. It's the pizza Whether it's pie. A six slice or an eight slice. You know, <laughs> each, each slice is a, is a, is a different aspect of how you're marketing. They're all, right. and they should all be independent from one another. Correct. You know, and yeah. with the thing, the thing with lead generation too, and the, and the grads that come on as platinums and legacies, the amount that they, the additional amount they pay to be a, a you know, be a platinum or a legacy, they're doing their job right. I guarantee them that they're going to, they're going to get that ROI. They're going to that additional amount of money that they paid for my department for 24 or 36 months of leads. They're going to close a good number of deals during that window of time. Sure. And if they, you know, what's important is if well, they're doing their part, if they're doing their part right. and you know, some of the larger lending products like bridge financing, for example, I mean, you could, you can, <laughs> you, you can make your year or, or pay back on like one deal or two deals. Deal, yeah. One or two sure. Deals, you sure know? Yeah. So it's really a matter of understanding, you know, a lot of folks find their niche, but you have such an opportunity across a, lar a large portfolio of, of commercial lending products to, in which you can be successful, whether you get comfortable and you find success with, with um, one or two of them, right. or you're someone who's comfortable with the whole portfolio and, and, and the lead generation part will do our part. And the better, or the better job I do is also dependent on the, uh, the graduate communicating with me. So I don't want to wait. I don't want to hear. So let's, so let me stop you right there. Sure, let's talk ahead. about that. So what people have to realize is that when this starts and they either they're in a one month relationship, gold, right? Golds get one month's worth of leads. Right. Platinums get two years. Legacies get three years. Um, we are very transparent with the data. We're very trans and, and, and it, it, particularly for folks that are doing it for a you know, longer relationship, two, three years, we're very approachable. You, your team's very approachable and involved in communication with that. It's not something that we set up on day one. And then we come back two years later and say, okay, let's see how you did with the leads. I mean, you guys every month are sending reports to these grads. They have access to, to we have this new dashboard that we develop. Um, they have access to everything, every call, every, every form fell out. And we have review calls to kind of analyze what's going on. Um, because it, it right. It's, it's unfair to say that if there was a successful campaign with one grad that we can duplicate that for another grad, because it all depends on geography. It depends on where there are, you know, and, and, and so I want to talk about that communication process um, of how we're involved with the graduate pretty much on a monthly basis with yeah, communication yeah. on how the leads are doing. We have 90 day review calls that are, are, um, you know, where the whole team is on myself. I lead the call, uh, our, our lender support, um, individual is on there. We have um, our, our person who's in charge of you know, marketing, um, social media development, SEO. Right. Uh, so that's a 90, that's every 90 days. But there's a Calendly link for me in the grads lead generation dashboard for a reason. Um, you can schedule a call with me at any, at any time and should be. In other words, you know, if, if you have, even before your, 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 uh, your campaign kicks off, if, if you have some questions about it, about how it works, about, you know, you want to share some information on, on, on a, the first few leads that came in, yeah. whatever it is, uh, let's talk about it. Because there's, you know, the, if they don't communicate with me early enough, the, the expectations as far as what they're supposed to be doing, but also the expectations of leads in general, um, you know, it might not be entirely clear to them. Got it. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, communication is key. And for instance, you know, if, if let's say a couple of months they're, they're noticing, like, um, I always like to use this example, they're getting, you know, an unusual amount of startups. And let's say that, as we know, startups are tough. There's a few products you could use with them, but um, they don't want startups. You know, they have to communicate that to you because there's ways to kind of filter them out through messaging on the landing page, what have you, right? right. I mean, I can make improvements that will, that, that will basically um, take immediate effect if I hear that something funky is going on. Right. But I need to hear from them. You need to hear from it. You don't know. To know it. You right. Know, don't, don't delay. Communicate with me. There's quirky things that happen with Google. Um, you know, there's, there's things that, there, there's changes that we make depending on what's happening in the economy, depending mm -hmm. on, um, 
changes that Google is making with their with their with their algorithm. And I'm already cognizant of that, but no campaign is the same. So right. I need to hear, I can see the leads, I can listen to calls, but um, I need to have a conversation. And you know, the graduates, they're, they're getting the most out of their investment if they're communicating with me as early as possible um, about anything good that's going on that they wanna to try to scale up, right. anything that is uh, maybe not so good that can be easily fixed, but I can't fix it if I don't know about it. You can't so fix it if you don't know about it, right. Important. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, well, you know, and I, 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 you know, one of the other things too, I want to highlight is that, you know, this, this process, um, again, we, we talked about it, but is an, is a, is an add on to what, you know, other stuff that they're doing. And, and, you know, when we say, um, the common question I think Mike Geisler gets when we issue docs or a contract to somebody that when it makes a choice, they want to come through here. They always say, why seven to 25, yeah. you know, like what, why, you know, why can't you just tell me you're going to give me a set amount? And it's because we're not, we're a marketing company. We can't predict exactly how many, but you want to talk about kind of the longer they're in the system, the longer they consistently do this, how their, their optimization gets better and they can potentially get more leads as, as time goes on. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, the two things are, as I just mentioned, communicating with me on the, on what the what the campaign uh, looks and feels like on their end. Mm -hmm. they're, again, they're the one they're the one ultimately talking to the person. Right. If they're doing the job right and they're picking up the phone and they're again responding to emails in in five to ten minutes, um, then let's have a conversation. If if they're not doing that, let's have a conversation about that first. Yeah. You know, and then and then talk about how we can uh, we can scale up the lead. So. Um, the communication with me is very important. The trust of Google's algorithm increases over time. So everything that I've set up the campaign, because I talk m mostly about the, um, the landing page, but I write the ads that people see. And I set up these campaigns with, um, with seed words, with, with keywords of which there are hundreds of variations of that are um, through, through our background, through our history and experience, they're keyword sets that we know are individuals that have, uh, you know, to use a canned word, buyer's intent. Yeah. They're not just shopping around. They're, right. You know, we don't have how to's in our phrases and rates, like rates in our phrase. People that are, would be searching, uh, you know, similar phrases, they're not, but, they're, but they're not shopping alone. They're not, yeah, they're yeah, yeah right, right, alone, right, right. You know, so the more time that, that uh, you know, as I, as I say, it's probably not the best way to explain it, but the more time that a campaign has to ferment in Google's, <laughs> in Google's uh, you know, with Google's algorithm, the more Google becomes familiar with the campaign. And Google sends me signals when I go into a campaign on um, uh, some, some recommendations, mm -hmm. some of which I, I ignore because I know they don't apply to our industry, others which I consider and maybe do some sort of version of what they're recommend, of recommending. But scaling up a can campaign it's a matter of me staying on top of it, the graduate communicating with me on how the leads are going, what's, what seems to be good, what seems to be, uh, again, not so good, and Google's algorithm building trust with the campaign, which happens over the course of months. Right. So right. You know, some folks that we, you know, we have a, we've had a graduate um, that we're not doing that great in their earlier months, and they addressed that with us early enough, and I made some changes, and my changes combined with Google now being the third, fourth, fifth month of, uh, you know, being in, of their campaign being active in Google, it just started lighting up. And right. Grads started getting 30, 40 leads. I mean, yeah, there's some, there's some, not everybody, but there's some grads that even tell you to tone it down. <laughs> yeah, we've heard that before. <laughs> we've had them on the podcast. Yeah, yeah. I can't handle all these leads. Yeah, like, I mean, <laughs> that's not a bad, that's not a bad reprimand. It's kind of a, you know. It's like, yeah, it's hey, you know, it's a compliment, but. When I hear grads say that, I'm like, no, don't turn it down. Yeah, I mean, just, you know, you know be, 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 uh, hire an assistant or, or, you know, get, hire an assistant. A, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get yeah. some referrals or some brokers, uh, you know, brokers working for you in the We're, working underneath you. Yeah. 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 There's a lot of ways to, 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 to make this work, but there's no better opportunity out there. Um, and, and, you know, and, and really to, you know, um, to conclude here, you know, what do you think? 
just to hear because you work with our folks at day in day you and amanda i should i should say you know amanda works with the golds and, and what we call paid clients you know outside cctg clients yeah who we handle lead generation for but from your standpoint again what do you think what are you seeing very successful brokers how are they approaching these you know it's kind of a recap how are they approaching the leads the leads, the leads. yeah i mean and the, the the guys who are just you know, killing it that are platinums legacies. Cause I know you only deal with the platinums and legacies, but it can still apply to golds. Ha, ha, best practices. They're so just to reiterate. They, they, um, they're working their business like a boss. They're, 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 um, they're very active. They're, they're, you know, the follow-up is a given the, 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 um, the picking up the phone, the email responsive, you know, responding to email leads immediately is a given, but they're, they're also being creative. They're being entrepreneurial and they're being creative with me. So, um, not only are they in regular discussion with me, but they're, they're so communication, they're, absolutely communication yeah. and, um, and, and creative creativity and diversity on their part. So, um, a number of my grads, they've, they've, you know, regardless of the industry they've come from, they have, they really are, are diving in and, and they're taking their time to understand the loan, the, the loan products, to understand the audience they're going after. And they're even giving me content that they want on their landing page. Whereas initially, you know, for the most part, I, I know what I want on a landing page, but, um, but if a grad is looking to run, run a particular program and again, to use the word create, think and create it. My phone. I think so. He's clearly not used to the podcast. <laughs> no, I think we just found our teaser. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. What? The, the beginning, we, we do it to you. You could only answer it if it's a graduate. That's true. Okay. <laughs> so, so, so the, the, it's important. Just answer the goddamn yeah. phone. Who it is. He's a rookie, Joe. That's okay. No, he's a, he, no, he's a rookie on the Mr. podcast. Martell? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's well, a podcast rookie. This is only <laughs> episode two for you, so we get um, it. Well, no, you brought up one other thing that things could change. I mean, a right. grad could, it's nah, not everything set in stone for two years. Meaning a grad could, let's say, want equipment leasing and real estate leads. And that's what kind of they want to focus on. But then maybe after five, six months, they want to maybe do hard money and bridge loans. I mean, Absolutely. so everything is not, it's not set in stone from when you launch to when you end. I mean, you can kind of play around with things when you give it some time. Absolutely. And they should be too. They should yeah. be finding where they're where they're comfortable mm. you know some 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 of the the uh the graduates they they're comfortable with everything yeah you know, because they pay they pay for all this training across the board so if if they're um you know if they're really diversified and they're uh they're brokering all the products that they get trained to, to broker that's diversity in and of itself that is a recipe for success in and of itself mm -hmm. but then there's other individuals that want to go all in on uh, as a as a you know primary uh, fix and flip lending advisor, or they, they want to dive in 100% with bridge. Yeah. Um, so, you know, sort of finding yourself and finding, you know, what, where they want to be. Could take uh, some time. Could, could take, could take some time because it's, you know, again, you, we have individuals that come from all different backgrounds and, you know, they're, they're uh, what's the fire hydrant, the whole drinking, mm -hmm. well, drinking from a fire hydrant. I think a few grads have said, you know, yeah. it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, an intense an experience class. and there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of uh but the, there's also a lot of revisiting and a lot of uh learning of the lenders various lenders yeah you need, you need to know your products yeah and the more that these these grads do that and they're not depending on us they understand that we're um you know we're an extension of them All right but you know they're they're going to win or lose on their own on their own decision making and their own resilience to be successful. Sure. So yeah, the, the, one, the, the ones that are doing the doing the best are, you know, they're they're highly engaged. They're working with me, you know, very granularly on what they want their ad copy to say, what they want on their landing pages, um, and we're bringing things to life together. We're working truly in a, in a partnership. Right. Um, and you can just tell. You know, I see that I see that pattern mm -hmm. where some. Uh, some individuals just get it because maybe they've owned businesses their whole lives, or maybe they come from a financial background of some sort. Um, 
and others, you know, we're, we're, we're working with them because we're helping them understand if it's their first business, not only do they have to understand the, the products, but we're, we're helping them become entrepreneurs and good at what they do. Yeah. And, and I think people that are not used to leads in general, I mean, again, there's a lot of bad ways to create leads, but you know, this is, I think one of the most efficient ways to get opportunities in the door and start working. But I think people that are not used to sales just think that, okay, every lead I get is going to close right. or every lead. It's easy. Once the lead happens, boom, I'm going to get a check a week later. I mean, That's they, the they got to put the work into it. You got to put the work into it. Um, to fulfill your end of the bargain to, and even if they, you know, even when they do put their work into it, they have to have a realistic expectation that, you know, if I'm going to be bringing you know, 20 plus leads to you a month, right. They're not 20 plus sure things, you right. know, there, there, there is, you know, in lead generation of those, uh, of those 20 leads, we want to get to a point where somewhere between two and five are getting into your, into your pipeline. Right. And you have to do everything right on your end. For that to happen, we get those two to five again. To right, if you're if you're off by one or two things and you're not doing it correctly, that two to five could just be one, or exactly. you know, or couldn't couldn't be any possible. And, and the other ones, if if they're not uh, individuals that you can work with, if you're again doing your job and, and you're you're ta having a conversation with them, and they turn out to not have the collateral for the business, they don't have the credit. Or they're or they're a startup that you know they have no they have no uh, no revenue history with their business. Yeah, it doesn't mean that 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 individual is not potentially going to be a borrower six months or a year down the road. Right. Get them on your email list. You know, right. and get them in your email marketing well, campaigns. And, and another aspect I'll mention is um, sometimes grads, particularly that are new at this, um, they haven't explored all options to present to the customer. This is because they're, they're new and they don't realize it, right? Right. Um, where, you know, I, I always say just because a borrower found you through a bridge or, or an equipment financing page doesn't mean that equipment financing is right for them, right? Because they, they don't know the, the breadth of products. The graduate does, you know, they're supposed to be the expert. Sure. And so it's up to the graduate. Never assume how they, how a borrower finds you that you're assuming they know what they need because they don't. They just know they right. need money right. in their mind, right? They haven't sat through a class like this yeah. and nor are they taught it in school in their mind. They need capital and they think, Oh, I need a loan or I, or I, you know, I need this not realizing that there's all these other options out there sure. instead of a loan. Maybe you could factor your receivables, you know, which is not a loan. Um, what they're calling you about is not necessarily. And again, you know, this is where a graduate that knows their stuff and really engages them and gets to the conversation right. with them. Right. Um, not well, every bar lands where they think they're going to land. Correct. And what I mean is utilizing our support team. So like, you know, yeah. if you, if you get something in the door, you can make an educated guess and say, well, maybe it's something here, but check with us. I mean, you have a whole support team here where we could advise you and cut down on the figuring out where we can tell you, all right, based on what the bar said or what they filled out, here's kind of how we would approach this. And sometimes graduates lose sight of that fact. And right. sometimes they're leaving money on the table where they're saying, well, I can't, they're telling the bar, I can't help you not realizing that there's some other options that they didn't even think about. Right. right. But that only happens because they didn't call our team. You know, I mean, they, 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 they yeah. want to do it themselves, but they don't call our team to kind of double check that. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're, if you're, you know, depending on, on where you are, um, if you have experience in the industry or not, mm. you know, it's really in your hands to, to fast track your learning curve. Right. So, Fast tracking your learning curve and getting comfortable with multiple products might might result in an easy cross sell where somebody is calling you because they're they they um you know they they need a you know they they, they need a um, an equipment like you said an equipment loan but maybe after you you have a conversation with them maybe what they they really needed was an SBA loan or a line or a business line of credit sure you know what I mean yeah. Um, yeah. and, and so you're, you're not until you're comfortable with the products until you're, 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 um, you're being very aggressive in your responsiveness. Um, you know, then it becomes fun because a lot of folks, you know, people are going to contact you that, um, you can, if you can't close them on, on a loan or get them into your pipeline because they don't come qualify, a little closer to the mic, because they don't qualify for something um, yeah. right away, take advantage of, of every all and have the mindset that um you know that person's going to be a client of mine a year from now six months from now yeah. 
Right. Because, because they're calling you because they, because they're either a new business owner or they're very serious about starting a business and you can, you can help them by educating them saying, okay, well, you're not quite ready to talk to me yet, but let me give you some advice. And, and you know, that being that consultant, that communication, they'll remember that. Yeah. yeah. That, that can circle back and make, and make more like 15 of those 20 leads actually become right. They may not be a lead right then. They may not be ready for right then and there and you'll close it in a month, but maybe in six months or seven months or eight months, you know, exactly. Um, that's a great point. Great point. So all well, those things gotta, you know, you gotta know, happen. They all have to come together and, and the, uh, the graduate has to know that, um, you know, you're, you're, you're paying for a program that's going to be a, can be a massive, uh, revenue generator for you and true financial freedom, but you have to put, you have to put in that initial work. You have to think smartly. You have to leverage all the resources that you've paid for right. because we're experts here in different areas. Right. Um, and we all play a part in all the, uh, you know, granular things that are required for this, for a graduate to have a successful business. Right. But it's all there for them. Absolutely. It's all there for them. Absolutely. That's a good way to, I guess a good way to segue out. It was good. Rick said it all. He did. He said it all. <laughs> well, um, <it's> the coffee. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, hopefully everybody found this useful on what, a, you know, when we, when we talk about leads or we, you know, the web, you read our website, go through and we mention leads. Um, hopefully this gives you a little better understanding of what leads are, how we generate them and, a little bit how our program works. Um, as always, uh, if you guys are, are looking into us, um, you know, this can be explained uh, by any one of our team members here um, while you're doing your due diligence. And if you want to shed some light more on, you know, uh, what leads are, Alex, our director of marketing, or even Rick for that matter, um, can provide more insight on a on a one-on-one -on -one basis uh, if you need them to. Uh, and your due diligence looking at it. So hopefully this episode was useful uh, in your journey of discovering whether you want to be a commercial loan broker or not. Um, Joe, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Appreciate it. I know you were silent on this one, but well, listen, you know. it's not about me. It's about everybody else. Really? No, seriously. <laughs> yeah. This is the quietest I've ever seen. Who, Joe? Who, me? Yeah. yeah, I don't shut up. You're right. I think you're coming true. down from that. You said you were, you were wired on coffee had too much coffee by an hour. either that or he had one hell of a weekend no <laughs> yeah. I, I had to teach rick how to use the coffee machine this morning so i'm a little i'm a little tired from that I had, I every time i come down here i had to do it yeah <laughs> well all right everybody thanks for uh for listening don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel uh and download our cctg app yep. where you can catch uh episodes coming out of our podcast and some exclusive uh content that uh you cannot see anywhere else so have a great day everybody and hopefully we'll see you soon there are just too many commercial loan brokers that don't have a damn clue of what they're doing. All we're trying to do here is better the industry for everybody. At the end of the day, you can make great money in this industry, but in the end, it's all about helping people. You know, people always say, Chris, how can I be a successful broker? It's two words, hard work and dedication. If you don't like talking to people, you probably shouldn't be in this business.